Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Flogo Life. I'm your host as always, Captain Ron. We got a special one for you today. We are down here in Hondo, Texas for the Open Fire Meetup 2023, and it's gonna be nothing less than spectacular. Open Fire Master Al Fagoni got 30 of the top open fire pit masters in the country gathered together to cook up every kind of animal that you can think of. We have goats, AKA cabritos, whole alligators, a pen full of pigs, more chickens than I've ever seen in one place, and beef. I'm talking beef, everything from steaks, to picanha to a whole spear cooked on an asado cross. We'll be doing the masado style, which is to say that they will be prepared over open fire. And the best part is, we're doing it to raise money for the local first responders. This is Mel Schmiller Jr., also known throughout the world as Dark Side of the Grill, and I have the great pleasure of cooking on his team, and we'll be doing whole hogs. I think I'll let Mel go more into detail for us. So today we're doing three classic hogs. We're doing live fire, hanging them on the cross. The first one is done absolutely traditionally, just salt. We salted her the night before, we're setting her up and we're slow roasting it over the open fire. Number two, we've got a classic barbecue rub. We've rubbed her down, she sat in her barbecue rub all night and now we got her up, again, roasting on the open fire. This number three here, number three is a special one. We did a rojo mojo, custom, custom made sauce that we soaked inside of her overnight what we're gonna be doing is taking these guys out yeah. and we're gonna chop them. Classic hog chop. We're gonna mix up that beautiful rojo mojo. We're gonna serve it with charred pineapple pico oh. de gallo. And you know what we're gonna do, Ron? Tell me. We're gonna win this thing. We are gonna win this thing because we rock, let's face it. That's it, man, that's it. With all of these top pit masters gathered in one place, I knew we had to talk to as many of them as possible. The next fire master I got to spend some time with is Javi of Big Hobbs Barbecue. Let's let him tell us a bit more about what's going on. Javi, awesome to see you, brother. Hey, nice to see you too, man. So tell us a little bit about what we're going on this weekend. Tell us all about what you're doing here and, and well, just let us know what's going on. I mean, on. this whole event is it's a, a benefit event to support the you know first responders here yeah. in Medina County. Yeah. Uh, Al Fragoni, you know, thank, sure. you know, thanks to him for oh, having yeah. me out. He's the one organizing all of this. Yep. But uh, yeah, it's just good times and Hopefully we're putting on a good uh, spectacle for everybody to come yeah. and enjoy and take in what, what what you know we love to do. It is what we love to do. We're blessed to be able to get to do Man, you, what we love to that do. Is so the so I want to ask you real quick about these crosses you built. They built these Asado crosses, all right? What are they made of? Um, do you have patents on them? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, of course they're made out of steel. And, okay. and you know, I, I, I use uh, you know thicker gauge metal to you know, put them together yeah. and, and sell them. Just, just for the longevity. Sure. I know some people, they might sit in their yards, whatever. So, exactly. you know. Of course, you know, I want them to last. It's not something you use every day. Right now I'm in the uh, patent uh, pending process, right. but it's actually it's there. there. Awesome. So anybody can go and see the design and everything because it's documented for, oh, that's Too it. Cool. The man with the plan. Yes, sir. Folks, this is early morning and that steer has been on for 18 hours already. This is gonna be a full day, so we need these Melinda's hot sauce breakfast burritos to get us going. Let's see what my buds, Pun versus Food and Booyah Barbecue have going on. Hey everybody, out here, we've got a little breakfast going on here. Got my man Pun versus Food Anthony here. We got Booyah Barbecue, whipping up some grilled, what do you got going here? Eggs, what else you got going we on? Got, we got breakfast tacos going on. Ooh, I so, like it, I like so, it. Some Melinda's hot sauce inspired, you know, some okay. breakfast tacos, a little bit of sauce, a little bit of hotness, a little bit of bacon, chorizo. Beautiful, know. beautiful. All Melinda's hot sauce based stuff, yes, right? Yes, sir, and some of the Blazing Star, all the good stuff. A little bit of everything, everything going on yes, at sir. Open Fire Meetup. Absolutely. Now, if you spent any time at all on YouTube looking at barbecue, you have to know who Jeremy Yoder of Mad Scientist Barbecue is. He's a brisket master cooking what seemed like 250 briskets and is gonna walk us through his process for the weekend. Let's see what Jeremy has to say. So your, your, uh, your method's a little bit different, right? You got a little bit different seasonings on there than just your salt and pepper, right? What else you got going on? So traditionally, Texas barbecue has been salt and pepper only. Right. And so a lot, of pl well, a lot of places were saying it's salt and pepper, but it's really salt, pepper, and then a seasoned salt. Sure. And it was kind of well known among the people who knew, but the general public didn't really know. Yeah. And so what these have is salt, pepper, and some seasoned salt. So the seasoned salt helps to provide a little bit of umami, a little more salt than just the kosher salt that you get with the salt and pepper, because you want to dance kind of on a fine line yeah. with your food of like, if there were any more salt, it'd be too much but salt really brings out the flavors and everything. If you have just a piece of meat that's cooked with no salt, yeah. you're like, oh, this isn't very good. Just put a little salt on there and then bursting with flavor. that pop, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so what we have here, we have the briskets fat side up because on an offset smoker, the heat travels to the top of the chamber and then slowly moves across and then up and out the stack. So the heat is above the brisket, so we want the fat up 
to protect the brisket. And then a byproduct of that is that the fat renders down really well. It kind of becomes like gelatin. So when you poke it, it's kind of, kind of a translucent yellow. Your finger just sinks in. And for some reason that I can't explain scientifically, yeah. it makes the whole brisket juicier. Okay. I don't think the fat is actually running through the grain. I was gonna ask you. I don't think so, it's possible. <laughs> when I know the scientific explanation of something, I like to say it, yeah. but when I don't, I'd rather say, you know, I don't know. This is what happens. So if you don't know what he's talking about, we're talking about a fat cap up brisket. There's always an old theory that if you cook it with the fat cap up, that, that as the fat renders, it comes down through the meat. I don't really think that that's necessarily true, okay? I, I just don't see it happening. I, what I think happens is it goes down around the meat, creates another bark around the outside, and it creates a whole better thing. I'm just not sure that fat renders down through the meat like that, like people think it yeah. does, like a, like a sieve, you know? Yeah. My best guess is that the fat renders, some of the fat melts and kind of coats the brisket, right. so it's kind of basted. Yeah. And so you retain more moisture because you have this layer of fat protecting it from evaporative cooling, yep. so you're not losing as much water. That's my best guess. Can't prove it, but hey, for what it's worth. Your best guess gotta be worth something. He's the mad scientist barbecue. I don't know about that. <laughs> but we got these 16 briskets on there. Right now, they've only been on for a few hours, so they're gonna get a lot, lot darker. Yeah. We're gonna look for something like almost black because that's gonna be our proxy to tell us how much smoke flavor we have. Awesome. So we can look at the color and say, it looks like there's smoke flavor on there. It's not 100% accurate, yeah. but it's a good idea if you're doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And uh, the more variables you can eliminate and do exactly the same thing and only change one item, the more likely you're gonna be to be on track right. to what you wanna produce. No major changes in one shot, little, little steps, little baby exactly. steps at a time. Yep, exactly. cool. And then we got some trim in here. We, we can talk about that. It's gonna be a little interesting. This is something I, uh, unapologetically ripped off from Leroy and Liz, but I'll show you that too. That's right, I love some trim. Let's go take a look. So here we got all the brisket trim that's mostly meat. It has some fat on it. And then here we have all the fat that's been separated. So this fat right here, we're rendering down into tallow. And if you don't know what tallow is, it's just rendered beef fat. Think of lard for pork. Tallow is the same thing for beef. And the reason we're rendering it in the smoker rather than on a stove is because fat absorbs a different quality of smoke molecule because when you produce smoke, you're producing thousands of different compounds. Some are gonna be water soluble, some are gonna be oil soluble. And the ones that are oil soluble, I want to get in the smoked tallow so that when I wrap these briskets up with some of the added smoked tallow, I have a full spectrum of smoke flavor. So I get all the water soluble stuff, all the fat soluble stuff, and then I'm bathing that brisket in rendered beef fat. So what you perceive as moisture is usually rendered fat. So adding it to the brisket is gonna make it seem even juicier. Then we have this trim, and at Leroy and Lewis, when they're doing beef cheeks, they, they trim out the cheek, and then any extra, they just throw on the grate and get it barky and crispy and salty and peppery, and then they cook it in rendered beef fat, so more tallow, yeah. and then it gets really soft, and then you can pull it, you can do like birria tacos, any number of things you can do with this, but because we're not putting it in a water-based liquid, yeah. we're putting it in the fat, it's gonna seem juicier because we've all had a pot roast where it's sitting in a crock pot, it's water surrounding it, you take a bite, it's dry and stringy, so that fat is really gonna help us. So fat's not the enemy when it comes to barbecue, it's your, big, it's your biggest friend, probably. Plus, we all know fat equals flavor. Fat equals flavor, baby, that's where it's at. That's right. Awesome. So those two things, and uh, we're gonna put some pork bellies on here, 30, I think. We're gonna do some pork butts. There's gonna be a lot of cooking, and if, you, if you're somebody like me, I love meat cooked with fire. This is the place to be this No doubt weekend. about it. We got our pork butts. We're on Team Pigs. We're going to be putting our pork butts on here to cook too. So this is going to be an absolutely amazing time. So thanks so much, Jeremy. Oh, Appreciate it so much, yeah. man. All right, everybody. We're continuing our trek around the Texas Open Fire Meetup. I got my friend Danny Dombrowski here. Danny, cooking in the yard. Danny, what do you got going on here, man? So we've got our baby goats, Cabrito, cooking up over the open fire. We were out here about 5 a.m. this morning. Lit the fires. We've got the stealing from the coals coming from the embers over there. Um, these are about a four to five hour cook. So we're, we're about halfway through with them right now. Got them seasoned up. Um, and we're gonna be making some tacos out of these later today with, uh, with an Asian based slaw. Uh, it's gonna be fantastic. Looking forward to serving these up. Cabri tacos. Cabri taco. There I you go. It. I love it, man. Awesome job, man. The Thank you. It's amazing. These are going to be great. Standing here smelling the smoke and, and watching the, the, the meat render and cook has been fantastic. Looking forward to it. It's barbecue, people. It's barbecue. All right, everybody. We're still out here at the Open Fire Meetup. We're here with Carlos, a.k.a. Nombre Chut Up. Carlos, what do you got going on behind us here? It's amazing looking. So I'm on Team Alligator, and uh, we put them on around 5 o'clock. We're, we're expecting about a five-hour cook. We're doing an open fire system. We're cooking with flame. We're not cooking with coals. We're having a flame. And we're having a configuration where it cooks all the way around, a ring of fire. 
it, how they marinated your season what, what yes yeah, so we have a, a chimichurri seasoning from alfergoni okay yeah and some other things we're not going to talk about that's okay <laughs> so so yeah it's it, about five hour cook it's going to be really nice and tender and juicy uh we're using oil base because of the alligator is a lean animal so use oil it keeps the moisture in. adding some fat in there with yeah yep, yep. really nice cool well it looks absolutely awesome no i appreciate you out. yes sir now open fire cooking isn't just a man's game nope we had some of the top women grillers in the country out here. They may be a little mad because I was originally supposed to be on their team, but let's see. Guys, we're here with my good friend, Grill Girl Robin. Hi, Robin. How you doing? Hi, Ron. How are you? So, it's so great to be with you out here in, te in Texas. So, we were just talking to him about these chickens. Pretty amazing. What was your part in the chicken? What did you do here? Well, Carla and I, we were originally, we've had a lot of people that were on our team and then not. So, we were kind of flying solo. You're not pointing fingers, are you? <laughs> and... And then we were like, okay, we we had chicken, yep. so everyone's assigned a protein. And at first I wanted to do a Jamaican jerk, but then we kind of pivoted and we said, let's embrace the Argentine sure. flavor. Stick with the mode, like, right? So we did a frog-style chicken. Okay. And frogging is like a new way of spatchcocking. It's almost like a reverse spatchcock. You're opening it yeah. this way instead of this way. Exactly. So you lay the breast out on the grill. And instead of removing the backbone, like in the spatchcock, but, it's just a better way. I think it keeps it more moist. Well, you know, you know what I like about it is that, you know, they say like a steak, you want a bone in ribeye, right? Because it adds flavor to everything. Like, well, I don't see why, you know, you don't have to remove the backbone. That's why I love frog style. I think it just helps make a better overall product. Amen. And so I think we're actually kind of lucky. Like, yes, it may not be as exciting to do chicken as like an alligator, but also everyone loves chicken. Hey. I think it's very exciting because you know yes. why? I can smell it and it smells incredible. So, so. good. And yeah. we're layering the flavor. So we've got our chickens frog style on this grill and cooking them open fire. And then we're actually mixing them with cream cheese and mozzarella. We're shredding the chicken, mixing it with cream cheese and mozzarella. So you get like a really cheesy bite. And then we're adding salsa criolla. Salsa criolla. Salsa criolla. I don't even know what that means. Pause. We better let Chef Carla explain exactly what that is. It's based on peppers, onion, tomatoes, Argentine spices, and most importantly, a lot of love. And it's really complimentary to the chicken. Love it. And then, last but not least, we are finishing it with a chimmy mayo made with Alfergoni's chimmy. Nice. Can't go wrong with that. Hawaiian buns. On and Hawaiian I think buns. it really will be the perfect bite. Sounds like a perfect bite to me, that's for sure. Nice job, Robin. Thank you. This is our last stop of the day. Let's take a look and see what this picanha extravaganza is all about. Okay, everybody, continuing on here, we're with my good friend, Willie, Adventures of a Fat Guy out here from California. How'd you make the trip, man? You have a good trip out here? It wasn't too bad. It yeah? didn't suck. It didn't suck. It was all right. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 <laughs> yeah we, we missed the storm, so we did all right. Awesome, awesome. So, Willie, tell us what you've got going on here, man. This is amazing looking. It's going to be pretty cool. So, we're doing uh, open fire picanha that we're hanging right now. We're going to bring them up to temp. We're going to stake them out, and then we're going to sear them off uh, on the grate over there to your left. Uh, my boy Crazy Green goes working on potatoes right now. We're going to do chibi potatoes, which are going to be friggin' phenomenal. We're going to toss them in Al's chibi after he sears them off right here on the plancha. Shouldn't suck whatsoever. You got Jay Miller working back? Jay Miller, you got Jay Miller, Jay Miller barbecue in the back. Give it us, uh, give it us a hand. So uh, everybody, everybody chipping in to make it all work, right? Everybody's chipping in. That's awesome. It's teamwork that makes the dream work, folks. So. Find him at, on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere, Adventures of a Fat Guy. Thanks for taking time with us. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you guys. Let's go. The weekend was truly something to behold. I don't think the word epic even covers it. We didn't get a chance to speak with the organizer, Al Fragoni, but we want to thank him for having me and Team Fogo be a part of this unique barbecue event. I'm ready for the next one already. Oh, yeah, one last thing. Remember, get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on the Fogo Life. Captain Ron, 